Hello friends, welcome to the Engineering Funda family. This is my second video, which is based on Internet of Things, IoT video lectures. In this video, I will discuss the components of IoT. There are five major components associated with IoT. In this video, I will discuss all the components in great detail. First, let's examine how an IoT system works. To understand how it works here, you need to understand the structure of the components. There are five major components of IoT. So the first major component of IoT is sensors and actuators. Sensors are used to capture physical input. For example, if you want to capture temperature, you will use a temperature sensor. If you want to measure weight, you will use a load sensor. If you want to detect gas leakage, you will use a gas sensor. Similarly, to capture any physical entity, you need to use a sensor. Actuators are used to provide physical output. For example, we can use an LED as an actuator. It will indicate whether something is happening or, for example, if it is off, right? Similarly, you can also use a motor as an actuator. You can turn the motor on as needed. So basically, actuators are used to provide physical output. You should know that in an IoT system, you will have real-time applications. So here, sensors are used to detect real-time data and actuators are used to provide real-time responses. Now I will discuss the second component that is connectivity. Look, basically we need to interface these sensors and actuators with the IoT ecosystem. And to interface them, you need connectivity, right? This connectivity can be either wired or wireless. There are various types of protocols available for this purpose. For example, you can use Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, Zigbee, and cellular protocols like 2G, 3G, 4G, and 5G. See, this connectivity component connects the sensor and actuator to the IoT cloud. But obviously, the third component will be the IoT cloud. Look, in the IoT cloud, we will store data and process that data. For example, we will receive data from the sensor through connectivity, process that data, and based on the processing, we will provide a response. That response will be sent to the actuator and the actuator will act on it. In detail, we will see how the IoT cloud works in this video. But remember one thing, the IoT cloud is not a compulsory block in the IoT ecosystem, right? The fourth IoT component is IoT analytics and data management. Here, we perform data structuring for the given applications. See, IoT analytics and data management is a very broad branch of engineering, where there are algorithms, where there is deep learning, where there is machine learning. There are many things along with IoT analytics, right? Here, our agenda is to provide meaningful insights to the given application. And to provide that, we have to work on the data, right? We will look at this in detail in this video itself. So the fourth block is IoT analytics and data management. The fifth block is the user interface, right? So at last, the user will use the application through which the user can monitor the application and the user's interaction with the application is defined in the user interface. For example, if you have an IoT application where you are staying here in India and monitoring your home and your home is in Canada, then how the user interacts with the application is defined in this fifth block, right? So in this way, there are these five blocks. Now, what will I do? I will explain all these five blocks to you in great detail. So let's first see what sensors and actuators are like. To help you understand sensors, I'll give you some examples of sensors here. Like we can have a touch sensor to identify touch. We can have a temperature sensor for the measurement of temperature. We can have a flow sensor to understand the flow of fluid or the flow of gas. We can have a position sensor to identify the location. We can have a load sensor for the measurement of weight. We can have a gas sensor for the identification of gas leakage. We can have a speed sensor to identify speed, and we can have a sound sensor to identify sound. Does that sound right? In this way, we have different types of sensors to measure physical quantities. Now, first of all, I will discuss the basic definition of a sensor. So if you talk about the basic definition, you should know that a sensor is used to measure physical input from the surroundings and it converts this into an electrical signal. That electrical signal can be either analog or digital. Based on that, you can say whether the given sensor is analog or digital, right? Here, when we talk about sensors, those sensors are integrated inside embedded systems. With embedded systems, we may have a microcontroller or a microprocessor, right? An example is given. For example, if you are using a smartphone or a phone, 
There are many sensors in smartphones or phones. I have listed some names here, such as GPS sensor, fingerprint sensor, tilt sensor, and we have a camera. Similarly, there are many sensors available in smartphones or phones. We may also have some IoT applications that can include some sensors as well. But in smartphones, there are a lot of sensors available, right? See, due to advancements in technology, the size of sensors is becoming very compact, right? So here, when you select a sensor, at that time you need to look at what the sensor's accuracy is, what its precision is, what its level of intelligence is, and what the application's requirements are, right? Based on these factors, we should select the sensor, right? So basically, this is how sensors are. Now I am going to discuss details of actuators. So actuators are based on how we provide physical output. Here are some examples listed, such as we can have a motor, we can have a valve, we can have a pump, we can have an LED, or we can have a speaker. So these are the actuators where we provide physical output, right? Look here. Sensors are used to sense various physical entities present in the environment, and actuators are used to act upon these entities. In this particular context, we are specifically using actuators to cause action and to effectively control the situation, ensuring the desired outcome, right? Actuators are used to make something happen based on a trigger. The control signal can be analog or digital. See, based on analog and digital actuators, we are providing the control signal, right? Here, we are using the actuator to turn something on or off. For example, you can use an LED to turn something on or off. Okay, that's why we have actuators. Now let's move to the next one. Let's discuss the next IIoT component, which is connectivity. This connectivity and gateway is the second component of the IoT ecosystem. Connectivity and gateway protocols ensure a smooth interconnection between sensors, actuators, and the IoT cloud. Right, you should understand some essential roles of connectivity and gateways. Let me discuss those essential roles of connectivity protocols. See, they play a crucial role in connecting sensors and actuators to the IoT ecosystem. Various protocols are available based on the medium and range. For example, we can have cellular protocols, Bluetooth protocols, Wi-Fi protocols, and LoRaWAN protocols. I will discuss those protocols in detail so that you gain clarity on how these protocols are used. Look, when we talk about IoT protocols for connectivity, for distances less than 300 feet, we can use Bluetooth, ZigBee, NFC, and Wi-Fi. If the connectivity range is up to 5 kilometers, then we can use cellular communication protocols. In this, we have 2G, 3G, 4G, and 5G protocols, and for distances lower than 100 kilometers, the data will remain on the internet cloud. Here, we have protocols like LoRaWAN, Sigfox, and NB-IoT, right? So in this way, there are also different types of protocols available based on range. Now, I will discuss how we have IoT gateways. So IoT gateways provide the interconnection of edge devices to the IoT cloud. That's why here we have the IoT cloud. Here we have edge devices. Here, IoT gateways will provide smooth interconnection of these devices with the IoT cloud. All right, so the IoT gateway provides the connection between the edge devices and the IoT cloud. Okay, let me discuss the essential roles of the IoT gateway. It ensures seamless communication between edge devices and the IoT cloud. It provides easy management of data traffic. It also offers security here. It will also protect against malicious activities, right? So security is necessary, which can be provided by the gateway. It will use the latest encryption practices through which it provides smooth security here. It also provides data processing between edge devices and the IoT cloud, right? It will minimize large data sizes. The reason is that when you interface sensors with the IoT cloud, at that time, the sensors will continuously detect data in real time, right? So there will be large amounts of data there. But if only meaningful data is provided to the IoT cloud, then in terms of data size, the process will run smoothly. Right, so here the IoT gateway also provides minimization of large data. And here we have intelligent IoT gateways that perform this task, right? So this is the kind of role that the IoT gateway plays. Now I am going to explain to you about the third IoT component, which is the IoT cloud. The IoT cloud plays an essential role in the IoT ecosystem. It is not a compulsory component of the IoT system, but still in some systems, we use it where we process data. Let me discuss the key essential roles of the IoT cloud. Look, data needs to be processed, and this is exactly what we do on the IoT cloud. 
And based on the processed data, we provide make and break deals and decisions are made solely on the basis of this processed data, right? So unnecessary decisions are filtered out here. And that's exactly what we perform in this case. On the IoT cloud, you see latency cannot be compromised, right? If you are talking about real-time applications, then latency is not acceptable. And to obtain real-time output, the IoT cloud plays an extremely essential and very important role in the IoT system, ensuring that the system can deliver timely and accurate output. When we talk about the IoT cloud, you can say that it is the brain of the IoT ecosystem, and this cloud is optional. It is not compulsory, right? See here, by using edge computing, we can perform local processing, right? So for local processing, we are using the edge computing. Where? Through edge computing, we can perform local processing. For example, for a group of certain nodes, we are providing processing right there, right? As I mentioned to you, this IoT cloud is optional, but if you talk about a large ecosystem, then providing real-time output at a larger scale becomes a bit difficult. That's why for some selected regions, we can provide IoT cloud. In those selected regions, some selective decisions are made, and this is what local processing means, right? So in this way, IoT cloud functions within the IoT ecosystem. Now let's move to the fourth component of IoT. The fourth major component of the IoT system is IoT analytics and data management. Let me discuss the key essential points of IoT analytics and data management. So here, the first task is data extraction. The second is data analytics. The third is data aggregation. And the fourth is data classification. These are the four tasks that we perform in IoT analytics and data management. Here, you see data is the fuel for IoT applications. So basically, we are working on data itself, right? So here, data is the fuel. Based on the data, only we are performing applications. We are converting raw data into useful insights. So we have raw data, random data that we are capturing from sensors, right? But which meaningful insights we need from that raw data, we have to decide here. And that's the decision we make here in data analytics and data management, right? Data extraction, data aggregation, and data classification are the main functions of IoT analytics and data management. We use deep learning to predict data for certain applications. That's why in some applications, we may need deep learning through which we will predict the data. Therefore, data prediction also plays an important role in IoT analytics. See, storage power and intelligent computing are key parameters of IoT analytics and data. So here, the first thing we need to identify is how much storage capacity our cloud has and how much intelligent computation we can perform on it our application will function based on these factors, right? So these are the key parameters that are associated with the fourth block, that is IoT analytics and data management. Now I am going to explain to you the fifth block of the IoT ecosystem, which is the user interface. The fifth component of IoT is the user interface through which the user will interact with the IoT application. That is why the user interface is very important. Look, to understand the user interface, you need to be familiar with some key parameters, such as what notifications are in the application, how alerts are provided in the application, how the application is controlled remotely, and how the user can observe the live trends of the application, right? If the user wants to monitor a task and control the task in the field, then the user's interface with the application becomes truly essential and important. For this, there can be various types of notifications, such as normal notifications, which we all know. For example, if an application on your device gives you a notification, that is a normal notification. But notifications can also be provided through email. They can also be provided through alerts and alarms, right? Here, it can also send commands to the field device. For example, you can also send commands back to the field devices, right? By giving direct commands, you can control the application. So here, manual control is also provided. Automatic control is there, of course, but manual control can also be given by the user through the application. The user can observe the actual live feed and also see the trends, right? So the user can also see the exact data in the form of graphs. And based on that data, the user can make some manual decisions as well. Automation can be done here, but manual decisions can also be made here, right? 
So it depends on what the user interface is like. These are the five essential components that are part of the IoT ecosystem. I hope you have understood all these things. Still, if there is anything you would like to share, please note it in the comment section. I would be happy to help you. Thank you for watching this video.